Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us here today. I'm Fabiana Bacchini, the Executive Director of the Canadian Premature Babies Foundation. Every Friday since March, I've been hosting Facebook Live to bring education to parents and healthcare professionals. We are bringing specialists, healthcare professionals, and researchers, parents from all over the world to share the latest information uh, and what is relevant to our community of parents with kids who are born preterm. And next week, I'm hosting Premi Health Talks, which will be a full week or Facebook Live. We are focusing on uh, lungs development and RSV, COVID-19, how is it affecting uh, babies who are born preterm who are now uh, children or adults. We have a full agenda with an amazing lineup of, of speakers, and you can check our agenda on CanadianPremis.org, which is our website. You can join us every day next week from 12 p.m. Eastern time. And today I, we're gonna talk about vision development in preemie babies. And I have here with me, Dr. Nancy Torgerson from Washington. And her passion is to help those that struggle needlessly in school, work, sports, and life because of visual difficulties. She works extensively with children and adults who have challenges in learning or vision information processing, special needs, and or brain injuries. Dr. Torgerson is a graduate of Pacific University College of Optometry, is a fellow and past president of the International College of Optometrists in Vision De sorry, Development, the COVD. She has been the chairman of the Washington State Board of Optometry and the Optometric Extension Program's national chairman of regional clinical seminars. She has received numerous awards for her work. She's a frequent lecturer and consultant to educators rehabilitation and therapy providers, and other eye care professionals. Dr. Thomas, I can read your bio because you are so, have so many awards, have done so much work and beautiful work. So thank you so much for joining us here today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to talk to you. And what you said to me on an email, uh, when vision works well, it guides and leads the child. When vision is not working well, vision can get in the way of development. You send this beautiful quote that I, uh, it really resonates with me and the development of my own child. So I know you have a lot to share with us parents. Uh, please walk us through your presentation and you have a period of Q&A at the end. Okay, thank you. Get this screen up. And it's just a pleasure to share with you all today. Be and okay, <laughs> when vision works well, it guides and leads, just as Fabi told you. And with preterm children, this is so important because when vision isn't working well, it gets in the way of development. Now, here's my disclaimer vision isn't everything. Vision is a piece of the puzzle and a part of the solution. I get so excited about talking about vision that it sounds like I, that's all there is. I know it's a piece and we collaborate with many other professionals. Why doesn't a child tell you that they're having a vision problem? A child only sees through their eyes and they think everyone else sees the same. So one of the things that's really important for all children is to think about vision because they don't know when to ask for help. And those that are preterm um, have many things going on that we'll talk about in just a bit. But I'd like you to look at this picture. Huh, what does that look like? Now I'm going to give you some other clues if you've never seen this. Oh my goodness, it's a cow. But if you look back now, can you see that cow? And most of you will be able to. What's interesting is I didn't change the color, I didn't change the contrast, I didn't change the size, but you now see it as a cow. And vision, is a learned process. And when, as babies, we're playing with them, looking eye to eye, and they're putting things in their mouth and discovering if it's hard or soft or big or small, and they're reaching out and grabbing to see how far away, vision skills are developed. 
in preterm babies, we have to remember corrected vision versus uh, corrected age versus chronological age. Because if it's if they're born eight weeks early, then you're going to add that eight weeks on to their birth age so that you remember where development is in their life. And sometimes we we put too much pressure because we're looking at the wrong chronological age and we want to make sure we help when we're looking at development. As I said, vision is learned and developed, but it's developed and learned through interaction with the environment, through movement, through touch, through sensory match. And our vision is when our eyes take the information in and send signals back to our brain and our brain takes the right eyes information and the left eyes information and puts those pieces together and processes that. And then with that information, plus information from the other senses and past experience, it directs action. And that's why I love this picture because you can see him literally going for action to the uh, football or soccer ball, whichever is your choice, and guiding. So it's the eyes and brain and body all work, working together and directing movement. So it's learned and can be learned. It's developed experience and can be learned. And when something, and also there's rehabilitation. So why is the potential so great for visual problems with preterm babies. Well, when we look at the brain, did you know that every lobe in the cerebral cortex is involved in the processing of vision information? Did you know more area of the brain is dedicated to vision than all the other senses combined? Did you know that 50 to 70% of the sensory nerve fibers in the body are related to the visual system? No wonder the potential is great for visual problems because the brain is, a, we are visual beings. One of the beautiful parts in the brain is some people call it the peripheral and central pathways, but really it's the dorsal pathway tells us where things are in space. The ventral pathway and stream tells us what thing, what is it? What is it that we're looking at? And from that, we can have our how to, how can I get to that um, place, I'm, uh, that thing I'm trying to grab as a baby or how can I walk? How can I crawl over there? Vision therapy is pretty, many people don't know about it. You know about occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech, and language therapy, what's vision therapy? Well, it is much like occupational and physical and speech and learning, only div, uh, dealing with the visual process. It's training the brain. It's not training eyeballs, but the brain. The experiences need to be novel, very new, meaningful, and fun for interaction with uh, little people of all ages and new neural connections and rewiring of the brain pathways are what's happening in vision therapy. I wanted to, oh, so much of our time these days are on uh, computer and screens, and this is not the best way for development for our little ones. I wanted to share a couple stories of little ones that uh, were, two that were preterm. Uh, this little one came in at four months old. She was referred by an ophthalmologist. She had a stroke in utero and was not responding to the left side of her body and had many developmental delays. We began what I call diagnostic vision therapy. Our goal was, can we see and get differences in increased attention on her right side, fixation and following with her eyes because just following was hard for her. In vision therapy, after um, 10 sessions, she began to roll and make global developmental increases. So they were uh, continued on and we saw her for several years. 
And um, mom was so thrilled when this little one was walking, running, talking, counting accurately, identifying shapes and colors and working on understanding and can, uh, concepts, what is in, what is out of the box and being able to start to see 3D. We call that stereopsis. Uh, here's uh, fun in action in the vision therapy room, but also with grabbing and uh, walking. Here she is on a little tilt board. Um, when she was two years, nine months, we gave her the wax analysis of cognitive structures. And she showed she was at a three to three and a half year old um, level. And she was sorting attributes, knowing her colors and basic shapes. It was thrilling. And mom said, if the ophthalmologist had not, um, if they hadn't gone to the ophthalmologist they did, they would not have found out about vision therapy and been referred. And her child would not have received the help she needed to reach her developmental milestones, like sitting up, crawling, walking, and learning. And you, many people don't even think of vision with those things, but it was so neat to see her grow and continue to as an elementary school uh, child. This little guy came in for an eye turn, esotropia. His left eye turned soon after birth. They moved to Seattle to have eye surgery. They had several surgeries and then a surgeon referred him to us. And we had 11 sessions before they moved back to their um, original state. And mom said the eyes would look straighter. His balance was better. He can walk up and down stairs. And that had been really tough. He was stacking things and looking at and can actually follow toy, toys now. And he can catch a ball. So they were so excited. This little guy came in at seven months old. And he came in with mom and grandma. And I'll never forget. They were so fearful because he had abnormal eye movements. His eyes danced around and he turns his head instead of his eyes to look and his eyes didn't line up. At four months old, the doctor had told him, told them that he had ocular albinism and the parents understood that he was blind. So they came for a second opinion. We did the evaluation and I said, let's I see some things that tell me he really does have some sight. And let's have diagnostic vision therapy to see his potential. With vision therapy, there is great growth and development. He's now seeing 2080 at near and 2125 at distance. And in school, he's learning to read. And most of all, he's a happy kid. And that's the joy that comes with that. You'll get all sorts of fancy words, ROP, strabismus, amblyopia, nystagmus, high nearsightedness, high fart or sightedness. But what I want to tell you is there's help and people out there that can evaluate even when someone can't speak. If the visual system is, is your visual system helping or interfering to achieve your potential? Um, I love this piece of art for moms, dads, and every grandmas and grandpas. With love, a mother raises her child to be all that he or she is inspired to become. And preterm babies are inspired for special things. And yet with love, the mother must also set the child free when the time comes. This can be very difficult in emotional time for mother and child. However, with true love, a mother lets go and leaves her arms wide open so that in any time of need, her child can always come back for more blessings and replenishment and can always fly again with wings of love. Um, wow, Nancy, this is so beautiful. Thank you. I have a lot of questions for you because um, there's so, so many questions parents have in, in, in terms of vision because all you hear in the ICU is about ROP, nothing else, right? right. And 
looking at the brain and you know how underdeveloped the brain is when a baby is born preterm. So I guess my first question to you is how, besides having a significant issue like a stroke that, you know, a lot of babies in the NICU don't have a stroke, but they are born preterm and they have their regular NICU stay with ups and downs. But then baby go home, you get checked up for ROP. How can a parent realize if there is an issue with the vision development? And right. what can they do about it and how early they can act? Right. So looking at just how the baby looks you in the eye or doesn't, are they connecting visually with the world? And are they, when they're looking, do they want to grab and reach? Or are they stuck in their own world visually and don't know where to look and grab and reach? So are the, the things of development coming along or are there question marks for you? So if that's happening, a baby, the youngest we've seen is three months in the office, but what I tell parents uh, though, and moms-to-be is call any time you have questions because we can see them younger, but typically we see uh, babies at three months and on. Um, baby doesn't, we have tools and instruments that we can check and see how far-sighted, how near-sighted, how the eyes are aligning and tracking. So baby doesn't have to talk. <laughs> and that's what people sometimes think. Not all doctors enjoy uh, seeing infants. So calling and I've left um, some information on where to uh, approach doctors and have the information on that. Yeah, we put, we're going to put some links on the comments below. But next, are there certain milestones that parents can look at? Because you said, okay, we go through the chronological age and corrected age for premature babies. So are there some milestones that's okay, by this age, my baby should be able to track or what are some other examples you could give us? So I, one of the easiest things is when you're holding baby, is baby looking at mom's face, okay? And that, we want that early on, okay? And so it's hard because you don't get all the baby time in NICU, so uh, holding time, but you want to be able to connect with mom and dad's face. If that's not coming along in the first couple months, that's definitely a red flag of something to call out and ask um, the doctor about. Then with that, then are they able to follow you or follow the dog or follow brother, sister around the room? So first comes just the fixation on face and face is the best um, uh, image or uh, thing to look at and gets true meaning, but then are they able to follow beyond their personal space and look away? Then when it comes to crawling and walking, vision guides movement. So if they're not making some of the movement patterns in OT, in occupational therapy and physical therapy, is vision a part of the solution there? So when they're in other therapies, even speech therapy, did you know that infants uh, that have poor fixation have, it's hard for them to watch mom's lips. So that uh, can create problems even with speech and learning speech patterns. I was going to have that research for you and I forgot to look it up, <laughs> but at University of Washington, that research was done. So even in those things, um, vision is a piece. Absolutely. So earlier on, when baby just come home from the ICU, and you know, parents love to buy toys and colorful toys, can they do anything with those toys to stimulate, to support that very early development from the get-go? From the get-go, you'll see that infant toys came out with black and white because that is easiest pattern and stripes can be wonderful. Also, 
uh, mobiles that um, have movement, but not on fast. <laughs> Think slow and calm. You don't want to hype the nervous system. You want to make it gentle. So that um, those kinds of toys are wonderful. And toys that also give them auditory information so it matches vision. So bells and rolling balls that have bells in them. And um, there will be colors that they just love certain toys go for what they love and then to introduce new things absolutely uh my question is for kids who are a little bit older mm -hmm. maybe going to jk sk and parents knows there's some delays and i know there's a lot of work with, with vision therapy for learning issues uh, talk to us a little bit about that because those are skills that some skills you're going to gain once we enter school that we didn't even know that if there was a problem or not before. So how can parents identify and really look for help? Okay. When, they, when we first go to school, we learn to read, right? And we need to be able to fixate and follow. So past five, are they having to use their finger to follow a line or can their eyes follow? And are they using their head or can they just use eye movement? Those are developed skills. And is writing going uphill or downhill or is the spacing way off? Is, um, it, do they get tired really fast? Do they fatigue quickly? Are they not, are they agitated or frustrated? Because the brighter you are, the more frustrating a visual problem can be because you know you should be able to, but you're not able to do what you know you should. So it's very frustrating. A child might be seeing things dancing on the page or moving. So how is, that's just reading. And then there's, are they comprehending? Are they making mental pictures in their mind and seeing mental movies so that they can remember? Are things backwards and jumbled? Is it hard to do things in sequence? Well, if you don't see in sequence, then it's hard to write in sequence. BD, uh, flipping of letters, it could be tracking, it could be other things, but you want to know, is vision a piece of that? I could go on for days on this one because it's the love of what the passion of what got me into this is vision and learning. Yes. Uh, so Nancy, but how can when parents should be concerned? Because there's some patterns that okay, this is part of the development. They will catch up with this, and sometimes you wait for this catch up that don't come. So right. when it's time to act or time just to wait because they're more preterm and they're they take their time and. You know, we always talk preemie baby steps. So mm -hmm. when is the time? Okay, now I need to do something about this. I think if you see frustration, you need to take steps because they're asking for help. They know they should be able to do better. The other part is uh, if, if they're all there, we want preemie steps, but we want those steps to be so they're not giant steps. And if we could take away some of uh, the difficulty, why not? It may be as simple as needing lenses for reading to take, make things bigger and push things away so there isn't visual strain. So I think the best thing is to have every child tested before going to school so that you have a baseline and then we'll know what to watch for, especially for your individual child. Absolutely. Nancy, but, so we know vision therapy is a private therapy. In Canada, mm -hmm. it's not covered. And a lot of times, unfortunately, cannot afford for this therapy. Is there something that parents can do at home to still optimize the development of the child or sort it out some issues that might not be that big? Right. Uh, there's the book, Enhanced Your Infant's Development by Etta Rowley. And this book gives all kinds of like angels in the snow and things you can do while diapering and just 
everyday things for an infant. And then play, play, play. And that doesn't mean on computer, <laughs> in free space, outside, doing play uh, with clay, with, uh, with paint, with doing real life experiences. And we kind of forget that because our world has gone so I technology, but we need to uh, work with our hands and, and be creative and build and knock down and, and get dirty. Uh, it, it, that's a good thing. <laughs> First time I told the mom that she about, she about died. I said, <laughs> Your child needs to get dirty. And she goes, what do you mean? <laughs> and so we've forgotten that. And so those are the joys you can bring as a parent. Um, right. Absolutely. Nancy, thank you so much. I know I just want to wrap it up with a, head, a last message for parents who are listening to us. Sometimes we hear some devastating news and devastating diagnosis. But as a mom of a child with special needs, I always feel there is hope out there. And despite the diagnosis and what it is in front of you, we can still celebrate and enjoy the beautiful child that you have. But I know you have a beautiful words for parents, so I let you share your message. Oh, preterm babies are a gift. And um, it's hard for parents. Uh, 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 but the gift is so great and the rewards are even larger for both parent and child. Enjoy the journey and sit back and see that gift and uh, what that baby has to give to the world is so amazing. And I have learned more from these children and uh, they've taught me more. Um, and I'm only the doctor <laughs> and you as a parent, giant hugs to each one of you because Look at um, this child as a true gift. My nephew was two pounds and he is in his 30s. He is a vibrant man and a lover of art and history and travel. He's a gift. Oh, thank you, Nancy. How lucky your patients are to be in your care and always giving this beautiful message of hope to families. Thank you. It does take a village to raise our children. And it's so nice to have this positivity around us when we are going through that, those challenges and facing adversity in life. So thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you for sharing your gift, your knowledge, and all that you, uh, you know with our families. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everyone for watching us here today. Uh, again, every Friday, 1 p.m., I have a Facebook Live with an expert or a healthcare professional parent. You can join 1 p.m. every Friday here on Facebook. And next week, I'll be hosting the Premier Health Talks. We are having uh, clinicians, parents, and researchers from all over Canada to share with us their uh, latest research and their knowledge every day at 12 p.m. Eastern time here on Facebook. And you can register uh, on our website, canadianpremies.org. And in November, I'll be hosting Premier Power Week, which is again another full week of Facebook Live with experts from all over the world to talk about prematurity and what's happening in so many different countries and here in Canada. So thank you so much, everyone, and stay well. <laughs>